We're going to continue on our discussion of web design. And again, I, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of resources available about web, about web design, and I wouldn't disagree with, with any of them, I don't think, or, or many of them. But I think I put the emphasis in another direction. All right. Good web design stems from the goals of the makers of the site and the users of the site. So anything that we talk about as being good web design is going to be something that helps the makers of the site or the users of the site achieve their goals. All right? So I'm not saying, you know, conventionally, if you were to read a book about web design, it would talk about good navigation, and it would talk about making the text readable, and it would talk about things along those, those nature. I'm not disagreeing with any of that. Those are all important things. But the reason that they're important is because of this. They help those goals become achieved, both by the users and by the organization that's creating the website. So, what are some design principles that you can think of that are, would help on virtually every website, would help the users and the organizations achieve their goals? What are some basic things that pretty much always ought to be true about a website because they help the users and the organizations achieve their goals? Okay. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the wording around a little bit, but readability. Okay. Readability? Or is it readability? I don't know. There's no spell check on this sheet of paper. <laughs> readability and ease of navigation. Clearly, that you want your stuff to be readable, right? I mean, I, it's, it's almost impossible to think of a goal where, uh, a, a website where the goal would be, well, we're going to have all this great information, but it's going to be impossible to read it. Or we're going to have all this great information, it's going to be impossible to find it. All right? So these things always, or virtually always, support these goals. Can anyone think of another example? One thing I will add about navigation is organization, exactly. Because these two go hand in hand and they're a little bit different. Um, navigation tends to relate to the physical links and making sure it's obvious that the links are, are, in, the, are in a good place and, and are visible and it's easy to understand that they're links. Organization means that I've broken the topic down in a way that makes sense to who? Makes sense to the users, all right, to help them achieve their goals. Another good word, uh, I'm not really crazy about this word, but people use it a lot, is the idea of branding. What do we mean when we talk about an organization branding itself? To stand out from the others, all right, is one aspect of branding. What's another aspect of branding? Another term, maybe. Quality? Quality? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's unlikely that any organization is going to try to brand themselves as low quality, all right? Um, I would define branding as projecting a image, projecting a desired image for the organization that creates it. And I use the word organization, but I mean, but use that term loosely. I mean, it could be a band creating a website. All right. It could be a restaurant creating a website. It could be a school. It could be a business. It could be a nonprofit. It could even be an individual. All right. That's creating a website 
to uh, um, help them in their employment search, sort of an online portfolio. So I say organization, I mean the people that make the site. They want to project a certain image. All right? What does that have to do with web design? What, how would that come into play with web design, the, the, the notion of branding? What's going to be on the home page? The choice of colors, the choice of fonts, all those things lead to branding. All right? Let's think, let's think of a heavy metal band. Does anyone listen to heavy metal music? No? Wow. Too bad. But you, but, but you understand what heavy metal music is. You know, real hard rock, loud, often dark, depressing themes, um, that sort of thing. What color do you think the background for a heavy metal band's page is going to be? Black. You don't even listen to heavy metal, but you know. So let's... Let, let's uh, Let's see, let's see if Ozzy Osbourne has a home page. And watch, they'll, they'll make a liar out of me, but we'll see. Ozzy Osbourne. Wow, look at there. I must be psychic. Alright? Because sure enough, the background on Ozzy's page is black. Alright? Why is that? It's a branding thing, right? What, would, what heavy metal band would want to have a pink background on their site? Uh, unless they wanted to do that like to be ironic or something like that. On the other hand, how many of you have been on the website for Barbie lately? I would assume that you haven't. I mean, it's possible and I'm not going to judge if you have been. All right. What colors do you think predominate on Barbie? Pink. pink. All right, let's, let's, let's take that uh, test. Probably, yeah, pink and purple and all those. Oh, looky there. Psychic again. A lot of pink in this. So I can... And there we go. What that is, is that's, oh, I, I didn't turn the computer on, so, unless in Ridgeville we have fans of Barbie, they should see it as well. Again, sure enough, there's a lot of pink on their website. What about Cleveland State? What colors would Cleveland State be? Green and white. Why? Because that's their school colors, right? Their athletic teams wear green and white and so on. So the idea of branding is projecting some sort of image and projecting some sort of identity. So that's, gonna, that, that's a goal for any organization. You know, you don't want, an organization doesn't want to be confused with other organizations. What about, now this is a little more subtle of a case, what about Apple? How would you describe Apple's websites? Website. White. White and gray. Yeah. All right. Let's go and visit Apple. All right. White and gray. Little and, and black in there. Little bit of contrasting colors. A little bit of, of dark blue. But even that blue is kind of a grayish blue. It's not a, a bright sky blue. Subdued. Um, I guess words to describe this, and this is very subjective, but you could say it is sleek, it is modern, it is minimal, it is simple. All the things that they want you to think about when, they, when you think about their products. All right? So this is sort of a subliminal way of getting an image across. All right? So keep in mind that many web pages are done for marketing purposes. And if they're not done for marketing purposes, at the very least, they want to project or confirm a certain identity of the organization. They want to leave you with a certain idea about it. Um, I had a great example, and the problem with picking bad web design examples is that people get wise to them and change them. But I had an example of a website uh, for a bank 
that honest to God look like look like the site for Nickelodeon. Just the colors that they used, the graphics they used, it looked like it was a, a site for kids. And it was like, who could put any sort of credibility in a site like that? This is your image to the outside world, the website. Um, and it goes far, it, or it can go far to confirm or, or damage the reputation of an organization. All right. So, all these things text being readable, ease of navigation, branding, and sort of going along with branding is being clear what the site is. A site loading quickly. You don't want to have to wait a half hour to view the content on a page. Attractive. Good information. All these things are things that I would say are going to be goals of almost every site. Now, notice I said almost every site. Yes. Yes. It, it is. It is partly up the internet, but again, the larger the inter the larger the file is it, on on any internet speed, it's going to load longer. In other words, a big file is going to take longer to load than a small file. Yeah, regardless of, of that. So you do have some motivation, for example, not to jam your page with a million pictures. Because even on the fastest connection, it's going to take a little while to load that compared to a page that's a little more streamlined. All right, so yeah, you're right. That does depend on the, on the connection. But again, we can make some generalities. The bigger the page is and the more files associated with it, the longer it's going to take to, to load, especially if they're large files. Now these are all things that are going to be goals most of the time. And your, one of your assignments, I think it's the assignment that's due next week, is for you to find pages that you think are well designed and poorly designed and come up with a list of guidelines of what you think constitutes good web design. All right? Now, I did use the term, I did use the word, most of the time. Can anyone think of a case where you would want to have a website where we're not interested in achieving one of these goals. Can anyone think of a website with poor, where poor navigation or poor branding or anything like that is a good idea? I'll tell you, for most standard websites, no. But there, there's exceptions to everything. And where do those exceptions come from? It comes from the goals and what the goals of the site is. And let me give you a, a couple of, uh, of, of vague examples and we'll look at one specific example. If we're talking about a page for an entertainment website, if you go, a site that you go to to be entertained, you're going there to be entertained. That's a chief goal among yours. All right? Um, when you're going to be entertained, you're not necessarily interested in finding a piece of information quickly and getting out of there. You kind of want to immerse yourself in the site. All right? So I could see a site, let's say, for a movie all right, that's coming out. Maybe have navigation that wasn't crystal clear, just to give people a chance to go in and explore and click things and figure things out and, and all that. It almost becomes like a game-like experience. So, in that case, there's a different set of goals. A businessman that wants to order a particular product, you know, for his office, doesn't want to be entertained. They want to get in, they want to order, and they want to be done with it. A, a, a programmer that is researching a question about Java coding 
She doesn't want to sit and have to click through 20 different links to, to find out. She wants to go to the page that has her information and get the answer so she can continue with her, with her project. That was, and that was exactly, we know from firsthand experience here that that's the case of it. However, a person going in to uh, explore that's a fan of a movie or uh, is interested in something that is more entertaining, they might want to spend a lot of time in the site, in which case unclear navigation might be a good idea. There's a, there is a site that was created called I Love Bees. Is anyone familiar with that site? This is good because this is an older site. All right, and, and you, you can tell us an oversight when you go there. I love bees. Welcome to I Love Bees. Okay, I'm going to go put this on, and we're going to watch it for a second, and we're going to see... Wow. Wow. Let me reload that. Or actually, let me load it in a slower browser. I think Chrome's too quick to get the, an appreciation of this. Okay, let's go and take a look at this. All right, there we go. Welcome to I Love Bees. And then we get an error message. Hmm. We go and we click on this. And we get... A list of chapters which contain these little videos or actually I think videos or audio I think these are audios This is clearly not a site about bees, but it purports to do this. And the reason is, as was cited, is this is a marketing site for the video game Halo. All right. So, obviously this isn't branding. There's nothing on the home page that says this is a video, this is a site about Halo. The idea of this was to create a buzz, was to get people interested in this. All right. And so... What happened is on the on online forums and all that, and if I remember, this came out incrementally. This didn't come out all at once. It got people talking about, you know, gee, you know, what is this site about? You know, it blah, 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 and got people interested and, and created a buzz that way. And the way it was written, and sort of the fact, I wish I could leave this up, because that's really a good example of, say, mid-90-ish bad web design, all right, going on in the background. Okay. Uh, and this is something that, you know, a, a real hardcore tech person would look at it and kind of chuckle, all right, even back then. But the whole idea of it created interest. So the purpose of this website was not to convey information, but to create interest. How to create interest? By doing things in a very cryptic manner, in a very unclear, confusing manner. So people would say, what in the world did I just see and forward it along? All right? Now, I bring this up just to show you that web design principles stem from this, the goals of the users and the makers of the site. So there's very few things that I would say are cut and dried goals that will be true for 100% of websites or design principles. All right? Because almost everything you can think of, there's a goal where you might want to do it a little bit differently. That being said, for the vast majority of websites, these things are a pretty reasonable set of standard design principles that are going to apply. In other words, if you're going to break one of these, you better know what you're doing. All right? 
And I would suggest that those of you thinking of a project idea, you know, this ought to be a big part of your game plan. <laughs> All right. Uh, unless you have a great idea of a, of a site with, with horrible navigation, then stick to making a site that has good navigation. All right. These I would just consider as basic design principles and I would not consider these goals of a site. These are sort of a given except under very unusual circumstances. All right. So therefore, when we talk about your design document, which we'll start talking about probably in a couple minutes, all right, I don't want to see listed as one of the goals of the site that the site has, has a good navigation. Well, of course it's going to have a good navigation unless it's one of those very rare exceptions. All right. Um, of course it's going to have, of course the content is going to be readable. Of course the content is going to be attractive. Of course the content is going to try to project, or the appearance is going to try to project um, some sort of, of branding or identity for the organization that the site is made for. All right. So we'll talk more about goals in a minute here, but these I would not consider as goals. These are just sort of givens most of the time. All right. Now, when we talk about goals for the users and for the organization, when a user visits a website, or let me, let me rephrase that. Does every, views, does every user visiting a website have the same goals? Well, of course not. Can you give an example of a site and how different people might have different goals depending on visiting the site? Yes? Amazon, you can either do research or actually buy the product. Okay. Amazon, you can do research. You can look at uh, and determine, um, you know, find a book, read reviews. And well, hold on. And you can actually order the product too. So there can be people that are just using it. And I know people that did that. They used Amazon to research it, and then they would go and buy it somewhere else. All right. So that's a possibility. What, what else? There's also streaming videos, music, and even uh, Okay. So how would those be used differently by different people? Oh, okay. I gotcha, gotcha. So, in other words, what, you know, someone could go, uh, uh, and that's a good, that's a good point. For example, Amazon Music. Um, when when you buy music, it gets put in your music library, MP3s of it, and you can go and you can listen to it there. And I do that a lot. Instead of listening to, instead of firing up iTunes, I'll fire up Amazon and go and play that. So, when I visit it, then I have a different goal. Now, interestingly enough, that goal supports one of Amazon's goals, because what's one of Amazon's goals is to sell music, all right? And it's so convenient if I go and buy something from Amazon, boom, it's in my library. So, again, it's a case of the goals overlapping, but that's a good point. Uh, one goal would be for someone to use their, their playing service and uh, to, to play their music. Another goal would be to actually go and buy a physical CD or a DVD or whatever. What's another case of a website that, that you could have different people visiting it that have really different goals? Well, let me name a website and, and let's think of all the goals or all the groups of people that could be visiting the site and what their goals might be. Let's stay close to home. LC's homepage. Um, Lorraine, or not homepage, but website. Lorraine County Community College's website. What are different groups of people that might be visiting that site? And what might their goals be? Those wishing to use Angel. Those wishing to use Angel. I'm focusing on www.lorraineccc.edu. Right. Yes. Okay, current students. Current students and potential students. How might their goals be different? Uh, 
Okay. Find out events. Okay. Okay. Anyone have anything to add to this? Other groups of people that could be visiting the site or other goals for these groups of people? Okay, foreign exchange students. This might actually be a subset of each of these because some of those students that come from other places are current students, some of those students are potential students. All right, businesses. What might a business be looking for by visiting the site? Yeah, internships. Career related resources. I'll sort of summarize it. Maybe even continuing education opportunities. Gee, um, we are installing a new computer system that uses PeopleSoft. Does LC offer a non-credit course in, in maintaining and administering PeopleSoft? That might be something an organization would, would want. They would, might want training for some of their people. Um, LC does some custom training. In other words, if you are an organization and you want um, a, 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 a course uh, on, you know, doing advanced stuff with Excel. You actually can contract with LC to have an instructor go and do, really customize it to your thing. Three, four sessions, whatever you need, and, and you can go and do that. So those are very different goals, you know. An individual, a current student isn't going to go contract with LC to create a course just for them, right? They're going to be looking for existing courses, so searching courses and making a schedule. All right, checking email. Other groups. All right, faculty and staff. Last time I counted, we had a bazillion different documents here that we can look at, all right? And I counted them all, all right? And rather than me wanting a form to request a sick day, for example, and me having to come in and ask the person and then finding it in a filing cabinet, I can print off my own sick request, sick day request form. Sick request forms makes it sound like you're requesting an illness. A sick day form, all right, is, is what I mean. All right? Or a, um, you know, a, you know uh, documents that relate to what I need to do to get promoted. All right? They exist. They're out there on the web to tell me, all right, these are the steps to go through. So, that's something I'm very interested in. Are students interested in that? No, nah, probably not. All right? Any other groups? And I'll give you a hint. The answer to this question, or one of the answers to this question, is included in the name of Lorain County Community College. Pe well, people from the community. All right, just general people from the community. In other words, there's a lot of events going on on campus at Stocker Center. All right, there's a lot of events. Um, th th there's other sort of extra services that the college provides. For example, I mentioned the non-credit courses, the gym, all right, free Pilates course, free yoga class that you can take over there, all right. And I can see where members of the community, they're not going here, they're not interested in a degree, they're not running a business, but they want to know what's going on here. In addition, the library, um, the library, um, you know, we is a branch of the Illyria Public Library in the downstairs, and it's our library upstairs. So finding out what hours it's open, finding out what materials are there, and all that. All these are valid reasons. So, it's sort of 
not completely correct or is a simplification, let's put it that way, when I speak of the users. Because really, each user is individual. All right? Even current students might be looking for slightly different stuff. Well, we can't develop a website that would be custom to the needs of the 300, 400,000 people that live in Lyon County. All right? But what we can do is do exactly what we did here, is identify different groups that are likely to be visiting the site and make it easy for them to find the typical things that they want to do. Now, each of these groups might have slightly different goals, and there might be some goals that they have in common. For example, a student might want information about the library just as someone, a member of the community would. All right? Just like a faculty person might. So that might be a goal to get information about the library and the holdings of the library and so on. That might be a goal of several different groups. All right? But there might be some things that are unique to one particular group or another. All right? For example, um, the forms that I mentioned, forms for promotion or whatever. Uh, businesses don't care what it takes for me to get promoted, and students probably don't care, and none of the other groups care, but I do care. All right? Now, there might be someone that is sort of, uh, and I, I use this phrase not in a derogatory sense, but an oddball that doesn't fit any of these categories. Well, you know you can't make a website to please everyone. But at the very least, they should still be able to achieve their goals even if it isn't quite as easy. You know, a good website should make it easy for the typical user to find the typical things that they're going to want to look for. But it should be possible to find other stuff as well. So it shouldn't be that they're completely out of luck if you're looking for something. Now, again, um, if we look at Lorraine's website, there's things that are good about it and things that are bad about it. All right, if we look at, at our website. But I do want to open it up and point out what's relevant to this particular discussion. And you'll see this in a lot of different websites that are for colleges. Oh, here we are. Notice what we have across the top. We have some of those very groups that we mentioned. All right? Current students, future students, business and industry, community services, faculty. So exactly the ones we mentioned they have. So at the very least, an attempt was made, and again, it's up to debate how successful they were, but an attempt was made to look at the kinds of people that are visiting the site and make it easy for them to do there. So if I click on current students, it shows me the annual catalog register for classes, graduation, choosing, and so on. If I click community services, it still shows me associate's degrees. It shows me universal personal enrichment classes, and so on. If I click faculty, administration, faculty, and staff, shows me the directory for contacting someone. That's always good because I can very rarely remember people's names. So organized for me by department, right? So if I want payroll, oh yeah, that's the name of the person in payroll that I'm going to contact. Or, um, you know, any other division. There are some areas about here that need to be logged on to, to access. All right, for example, this. Um, career and jobs, right, 
right? And, and that again could either be business and industry or that, or, or, or just an individual. So yeah, that could be um, one on its own. Business and industry. Mm -hmm. Right. So at the very least, what we can say about LC site is that it acknowledged the fact that not everyone visiting the site is going to have the same goals. That we can categorize our users into some fairly good categories that's going to cover most of the situations. Now if we go visit another website, Cleveland State. All right. Now, I don't like this because they put that way at the bottom. Alumni, current students, faculty and staff, future students, parents. I, th I prefer the placement of that stuff on, uh, on LC's page because it's right on the top is obvious. All right, let's pick another one. Worcester. G, current students, faculty and staff, parents and family, alumni and friends. Interestingly enough, they don't have one for pr prospective students. I'm kind of surprised at that. All right. Oberlin also doesn't really have those categories on here. Well, they do when you click more. All right. Interesting. I kind of, again, would want to put that more prominent so you wouldn't have to click on it to see it. Now, to be sure, there's differences between LC, CSU, Worcester, and Oberlin. All right. Um, as a result, maybe that is what constitutes some of the slight difference in, in design. All right. So it's hard, it's hard to say. But you notice that most of these, to some degree, took into account the fact that there's going to be different people visiting the site. All right. So. Goals, really, can be subdivided by groups. So we shouldn't talk about the goals of the user. And you hear that a lot among IT, peop IT people will say something about the user as though there's like one, one person out there that's the user and you're building the site for that one person. In reality, there's a number of different people out there and they all have their unique goals. All right, but we can categorize those goals into some common groups and we can attempt to accommodate at least the important things for all of the groups and make it possible for them to get other stuff as well. With this introduction, we're now going to start looking at the project assignment because the project assignment happens in two pieces. The first piece is the project design. And that's a document along with a prototype. What's a prototype? A prototype is a mock-up of what the final site will look like. So it doesn't need to be 100% complete, but I want you to do a couple pages, sort of as a rough draft, but it should be in HTML and CSS and all the cool things that we've learned. All right. The design document is going to have four parts plus the prototype gives us a total of five parts. Let's look at the requirements for this. And let's look at a sample that I prepared. 
So if I look under this class, content, semester project, project overview, create a small website, six to eight pages, we're following a specific methodology. The goal of the project, technically sound, well designed, effectively communicates the intended message. Now, typically students either, uh, or typically um, one problem that students run into is as far as choice of the topic goes. And I've had some students tell me choosing a topic is harder than actually doing the work. Something I don't understand. And if you're really that stuck on it, let me know and I'll make up a topic. All right? And at the very least, if you don't like what I make up, maybe that will inspire you to make up a better one on your own. All right? One problem that you run into, too, is picking a topic that is too broad or possibly too narrow. For example, if I were to say I want to do a site about sports, well, that's kind of a broad topic, all right? Um, I guess you could do that, but you really wouldn't be able to go with six to eight pages into too much depth. And to really cover the topic, you'd really need a whole bunch of pages. And while I'm certainly not one to discourage you from doing work, you want to do the amount of work that's required to get the job done. There's no need to do a crazy, excessive amount of work. This is a warning I very rarely have to give the students. They usually appreciate that one pretty well. So what could you do to narrow it down? Well, you could narrow it down to football. All right. Well, that might even be too broad. Well, you could narrow it down to the Cleveland Browns, the history of the Cleveland Browns. All right. I took the broad topic and narrowed it down. And if you think about it, yeah, I could probably come up with six to eight pages about the history of the Cleveland Browns. All right? Now, sometimes the situation is too uh, narrow. Like, you might pick, um, pardon me? A fruit, sure. I'm going to, pardon me? Right, exactly. So, I'm going to do a website about mangoes. Well, okay, I can talk about mangoes and where they're grown and what you can do with them. All right, that might be one page. All right, now, you could expand that to say, well, I'm going to talk about tropical fruits, in which case you could talk about mangoes and papayas and all the other things that grow in the tropics. All right, almost any topic you can either narrow or broaden. And if you're having difficulty with that, let me know and I can brainstorm with you. You know, and again, usually, yeah, usually that's what people say. It's like, well, I want to do a page about this, but I can't really think of six to eight pages. And usually after talking with them for a couple of minutes, we can come up with, with something, a topic that is, is worth it. All right. Can you pick, pardon me? Uh-huh. Absolutely. 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 Uh, the question was, could you pick a city and do this about that? And absolutely, you know, think of, of any, you know, any city. Think of Paris. What could you do about Paris? Wow, you could do a lot of stuff about Paris, right? You could talk about the history there. You could talk about the museums there. You could talk about the food there. You could put a list of the five things that you ought to visit if you ever find yourself in Paris and so on. You could easily come up with, with six to eight about that. So yeah, that's absolutely a good example. Now what's going to guide you in defining what those pages are? Well again, the goals of the user. Who are you writing the site for? Are you writing the site for someone that's going to be tourists? All right. Are you writing a, the site for, and think about it, let's say, I, let's say I want to do a, a, a page about New York, all right, giant city, or really any, any big city. Am I writing it for someone that doesn't live there, or am I writing it for people that do live there? Or am I writing it for both? Because right? if you think about it, my brother lives in New York. 
He doesn't need to know where the Empire State Building is, right? He walks past it every day, probably. All right, but he might want to know about a new restaurant that just appeared in Greenwich Village or something. Whereas that might be a little too specific for me that visits it visits once every five years or something like that. All right. So again, it's where you define your user groups will dictate the goals, and then it will, it will from that will stem the content. Here is the document that describes the portions of the design. The first portion is called the strategy section. The strategy section is where we look at the goals of the site. All right. Remember, the way I define web design, everything comes from the goals. Because Everything, as we saw with the I Love Bees website, even having a clear navigation, all right, well, yeah, 99% of the time we do, but, well, we might have different goals. We might take a different approach. In this section, you define the goals. For a site to be successful, it must address the goals of who creates the site along with the goals of the user. Two sites might be about the same topic, but look very different if they're targeting towards different audiences. All right, and we, we talked about that a second ago. The goal should be specific to your website. In other words, don't say the site should have clear navigation. Well, of course it should have clear navigation, unless there's something exceptional about it, like you're making I Love Bees Part 2, or something like that. So in this section, you describe your site's topic and purpose. You give, you define three goals of, I'm saying your goals, I mean putting yourself in the goal, or I'm sorry, putting yourself in the, in the shoes of, the, of the, the organization creating the site. A prioritized list of three user goals that the, pri that the project will address. And finally, create three user personas. Now we'll talk about user personas next time in more detail and we'll see examples of them. But essentially a user persona is a profile of typical users that are visiting the site. So for example, if I were doing a site for LorraineCCC.edu and I wanted to create three personas, one of my personas might be Fred who is a adult that wants to be a lifelong learner and le new lear learn new things. Fred's already established in his career, but he wants to enrich himself. He wants to continue learning stuff about maybe his career or maybe just special interests. I might pick Julie, who's a high school senior, who's thinking about where she wants to go to school next year. All right, And she's considering LC as one option. Then I might pick Mike who teaches at LC, all right, and needs to know where to find sick day forms and things like that, all right. So your personas are going to reflect that. Now, this is another area where students sometimes get a little confused. It's like, well, I can't think of three different people that, um, or three different personas uh, for people. Well, with a little imagination, you can come up with it. Usually, or often, the personas are things like people that know a lot about the topic, people that don't know anything about the topic, and then come up with a third. So for example, if I was doing a site about New York, I might say people that live in New York is one persona, people that don't live in New York is a second persona, and then I might come up with a third. For example, maybe someone coming from overseas. All right, they're going to have maybe a little bit different goals than a visitor from Ohio would um, uh, in visiting uh, New York City. Or I might say one of the goals would be, or my site might be for people considering moving to New York. And I might have a special section for students who are considering going to college in New York. I might have it for actors who want to move to New York and become stars. Uh, and then I might have it for musicians. All right. So all those are valid examples of personas. All right. What we'll do next time 
is we will finish reviewing this document, which is the instructions and rubric for the design. And then we'll look at an example of the sample plan. So if you have not already, be sure you have reviewed these three documents by Monday. The project overview, the project design instructions and rubric, and the sample plan. The project completed rubric is pretty short, but take a look at that one as well. We'll review these four documents, um, probably get, get to all of them on Monday. And if you have read them in advance and can come with some questions, that, will, that should make it go a, a little easier. All right, questions. All right, time for them.